Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna cover a product a little bit. It's something you've heard me talk about before. I've heard a lot of people ask questions about it. It still comes up and I think I did videos on it quite a while ago and I think people maybe forgot the videos were there or never watched them. Um, so when I did this room, I'll give you the whole backstory in the next way, but this is gonna be a video about Hush Frame, which is an isolation product. So many of you know, one of the things I specifically specialize in in my home theater design work is the engineering of sound isolation. And I, I would like to think, I do think that I'm better than a lot of the other people I, I compete with in doing sound isolation design. Uh, I can do real engineering with it. I think a lot of people kind of just copy and paste what they see or what the manufacturers tell them. So in many rooms, you can actually get away with that. Um, in more serious rooms, you can't. But my argument would be you always want somebody who knows what they're doing so that they can look at a room and understand when you can get away with a copy and paste approach and when you can't, because otherwise you're just hoping that they understand that or that your room matches the copy and paste situations, right? Anyway, back to Hush Frame. So when I did this room, I was gonna do what I've always done, which was gonna be basically a product like Isomax. Um, so it's a metal clip. It's got uh, rubber or urethane or silicone isolators in them. And then you've got hat channel that clips into it. You've got these isolators go on the studs. There's a certain spacing to them. They add resilience. So resilience is basically flexibility and some damping in the mount itself. You've got hat channel and then the drywall goes up. That's your mass layer. And you add as many layers as you want to increase mass as much as you need to, right? And it's very effective. I mean, if you take a standard, uh, we'll, we'll even go a 24 inch spaced on center stud walls and you put you could put in 20 layers of drywall and you will find that you, you actually, I should probably figure this out when we say, so you get six dB for each doubling of mass and it's the drywall on both sides that constitutes the mass of the wall. So normal walls have half inch lightweight drywall and you've got one layer on each side. Going to heavyweight drywall actually adds about 60 to 80% more mass, depending on the half inch stuff you're getting. And so when you add, if you switch over to that, uh, you've probably maybe not doubled your mass, but you've added quite a bit more. Um, so you'll probably get about four dB, three to four dB, just by switching to the higher mass drywall. Add another layer to both sides. So we've gone from two layers to four layers. We've doubled the mass again, right? You're gonna get six dB for that over what you would have had. So going to higher mass drywall, like I said, we added, we're just gonna go with three. Uh, uh, we'll go with four actually, I, I make our numbers easier to work with. Doubling it, we get 10. Double it again, so not two layers on each side, but four layers on each side, that's eight layers of drywall, gets us to 16. If all we did was go to the heavier weight type X drywall and then added a decoupler to it, we would have added about 12. So we would be, and it could be more than that. We could be relatively close to where we were. Add a little extra spacing, you know, switch it to a two by six wall. All that's doing is adding more air gap and lowering the low frequency area. You probably would go from 12 to 16 actually at that point. So now you've matched eight layers of drywall. Throw back on those eight layers of drywall and you're gonna start getting some pretty serious amounts of extra isolation on top of everything else. E easily getting into probably like 30 dB of isolation, you know, done correctly with insulation and the whole deal. So anyway, very effective technique. Uh, uh, decoupling is needed. There's lots of ways to do it. One of the big problems with Isomax and the other products like that is it's metal. And hat channel is not cheap, especially recently. And when you go to your contractor and you show them that metal clip, so here's what's gonna happen. Either they're gonna say, we don't do that and we're not gonna do that. Not an uncommon thing. Or they're gonna say, I'll give it a shot. This isn't something we've done before. We'll see how it goes and they'll overcharge you or they're gonna even, even yeah, switch in a metal crew. So there's often you, these contractors, if they're bigger, have crews that specialize in either metal studs or wood studs. Residential is almost always wood. Metal is not very common. And so they're gonna look at the metal stuff and they're gonna say, well, that's our metal stud guys. Well, guess what? Those metal stud guys typically make more money. It's considered more specialized. Um, there's usually less of those crews. They're usually reserved for commercial jobs. So for a residential 
job for a contractor that does both to pull one of his commercial groups off to do residential, you're going to get charged for that. And so it's not uncommon for that to cost more money or even just be a non-starter. And that is my experience with it. When I wanted to do the Isomax clip, that actually did come up. And what the guy that was going to do the job told me was he was going to put a metal crew on. Now, um, around the same time this happened, when I started to reach out to some companies to get um, looking at some options, I found the hush frame and I reached out to uh, the ISO store, actually, which is where I found the product. And he said to me, Eric's his name, uh, you should talk actually to Alan, the owner of the company. I think he'd want to work with you. This is a fairly new product. It hasn't gone into a lot of projects yet. And I think he might be interested in getting some coverage on it. So I evaluated the product. Now you got to remember, I wouldn't take something free that I don't think works because I still have to pay to install it. In fact, the cost of the product is nothing compared to the cost of installation. So that's just a big waste of money. So please, again, we can talk about ethics with all this. Keep, keep that in mind. Taking a product for free does not affect, in this scenario, my choice to do a video on it and tell you about it. It was just a, a impetus to consider something different. Normally, like I said, I would have gone with a different product. So I asked Alan, well, before I go spend all this money to install this product, and he hadn't actually, uh, at that point, he hadn't agreed to anything. I said, um, can you send me some test data? And it turned out he did probably more tests at Riverbank Labs than anybody I've ever seen do for any product. Like Green Glue, for instance, had gotten kind of famous for a while. St. Cobain's, although they weren't the ones who I think ran the test, had done so many different tests with the product, it was unbelievable. And it allowed you to look at all these different scenarios. Well, so they did the same thing with the Hush Frame product. And so I was able to really study it and compare it against products done in the same lab um, or other labs same assemblies and just get a sense of like what the product was doing. And the results were comparable or better than everything else I was looking at. It was never worse. And if it was worse, it, it would have been something very specific, right? Like it, for the most part, it was better or equal across the board. And in many cases, it was better. So I was really impressed. So I said, well, this, this looks really promising. So he goes, look, um, I will send you enough to do your room. Um, and yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, there was no real quid pro quo, actually. So I'll just say this. He just said, let me know what you think. There was not a, you must do five videos and you must give me all these. It was just, let's see where things go. Let me know how easy it is you think to work with. So I stuck it into the room and I worked hands-on with the guys who installed it. So I say stuck it into the room. I figured out, I planned out where everything was going to go and I did a floating floor with it. I did sound isolated walls with it and I did sound isolated ceiling with it, using it as the, the decouplers for all of those. And I, uh, there was not a ton of information on how to install them. The floor actually, I wrote Alan and said, here's my idea, would it work? And he said, yes, and we're testing that. There were no instructions. So I went back to the guys and said, here's what we're doing. They were like, where are the instructions? Like, they don't exist. I just made this up, but we're going to do it anyway. And within a week, everything was done in terms of installing it. And they actually said to me it was very easy to work with. Now, these guys had actually never done sound isolation like this at all. You know, they'd done hotels and stuff, but they had used more basic things like staggered studs with thicker drywall or double drywall. They had never done even Isomax clips, right? Well, recently I had a client and I've had, so I've done this in lots of projects and it's gone well every time. They've always told me they really like it and it worked well. Recently I had a project where it's actually ongoing and the client told me he was going to go with that product. So... Uh, I got him connected with Alan, he bought the product, and uh, they put it in, and he was giving me all these things about like, well, how do we do this, how do we do that? And then intermixed with all that was this, by the way, my contractor says they love the product. Now, here's why this is interesting. They had already been trying to push him towards, I think it was a Kinetics product, um, but basically one of the competition metal products and have used those products before. So they have experience installing the competition products. They know what it's like to do it. They know how hard or easy it is. They even were pushing him towards those products because it's what they were used to. They went with this because it's what I wanted him to use. And they came back and said, they love it. It was extremely easy to use. So for all of you watching this who are trying to think of what to do, I do highly recommend the Hush Frame product over those metal clips. And the reason why I recommend it is that while there are scenarios where even I would still use the metal clips, or I would use like the spring isolators, in the vast majority of low to high-end jobs that I would do, 
the hush frame product will be equivalent or better with some advantages. One is it's, it's a wood product, so it's easier for guys that are used to wood stud construction to work with. I find it easier to install. There's a lot more flexibility in how it can go in. You can uh, change the angle and positioning a little bit more because of how it goes, which allows you to straighten the wall out. So just as an example, the clips usually go on the front of the stud face. These go on the side of the stud, and so you can move them forward and back that little bit that's needed to straighten the wall, which is really nice. You can shim them too if you have to. Um, they, you can use, as long as you can get good straight ones, you can use furring strips instead of hat channel. And so because of that, they're typically a lot cheaper to implement because furring strips are often way cheaper than hat channel. Now that may, may not always be true. I did have one client who told me that for him, the problem was he couldn't get straight ones and the straight high quality furring strips were just as expensive as hat channel. So for him, he was just using hat channel. So there may not be a cost incentive for you there. But anyway, it's a good product. The price is good for what it is. Performance wise, it's equivalent to the high end isolation clips. So yes, I know there's some really, really cheap clips out there that have no uh, rubber grommets or anything. And they're only like maybe $2 a piece or something like that. Whereas these are, I think a little under $5 a piece. So that's obviously a big difference in price. The other thing to look at though, is that there's a weight limit to these products. So with anything that uses furring strips, the weight limit is actually the pullout from the clip. And it's defined by the gauge of the clip and the amount of places that basically the number of clips you have. So with the uh, hush frame product, it would be the silicone breaking apart or the screw coming out of the wood. In either case, both of those are substantially higher than the hat channel coming out of a clip. And so in many, many assemblies, you can get away with a lot less of the hush frames than you would need of the clips for a given amount of wall mass. So there is some cost savings potential there. Now you don't want to overload those and you do want to have enough mass on them per clip to be able to get a nice low frequency uh, resonance to them. But um, what I'll say is that it would be a pretty extreme wall where you're going to need to use something like 16 by 16 spacing. Whereas with the ISO clips and the ISOMAX clips and those types of products, what I found is it depends. But when we start to get into those higher mass walls, like when I told you earlier about doing potentially four layers of five eighths inch type X drywall, I mean, that could get to a point in mass. Think about it. Typically you're at what? 2.4 pounds. I believe it is per square foot of type X drywall. So that would be, 4.8 for two, so 5.6 for four layers, 5.6 pounds. Uh, a lot of those clips, maybe not 16 inches, but you probably need like a 16 by 20, something like that. Whereas you could probably still get away with a 24 by 32 or a 20 by 32, something like that with the hush frame. Um, there are some walls I did with the, this is a really heavy wall, but like, let's just say you added concrete, like hardy board and drywall and you did a bunch of layers of both. So I did one once that ended up being 12.75 pounds per square foot. And um, that was enough to cause 16 by 16 spaced isomech clips to potentially pull out. And so we had to go with really close spacing. I think it was 12 by 16 to be sufficient with extra in some areas like around doors and stuff like that. Um, with the hush frame product, 16 by 16 would have been more than fine, even at that extremely high mass. Now that's unusual, but I'm just making the point. There's other advantages to these, the pullouts lower. Silicone is more resilient than even that rubber that they use. It has a nice low frequency resonance to it, lower than rubber. It's not as low as a spring, but it is very low. So between the fact that it's closer to a spring and the fact that it's more resilient, you tend to get more decoupling which is part of why it's more effective. So the, what they call Vibridge technology, which is the silicone bridges between them, works really, really well. And it has really good internal damping properties to it as well. So just my recommendation out there for those products is Hush Frame. I really like Alan. I like his company. I want to see him succeed. I, I do think it's actually better than the competition in that class of product. There's an upper class of isolation where you have to use something different. But this would work for the vast majority. I'm going to guess all of you, basically, who watch my videos would be well served by using this over the competition. It, in those extreme scenarios, which we can do a video sometime on extreme isolation, yeah, you got to get into springs. But in most scenarios, this silicone product is very good. So thanks for watching the video. 
Uh, hopefully this is helpful. If you've got questions about Hushframe, let me know. Happy to work with you on it.